Philippe Laborie, Deputy Director of Paris Orly Airport. Welcome to Airport The Interview, our uh, series of C-level interviews uh, with um, airport directors, airport leaders who are implementing um, CESAR solutions and are very engaged in innovation. Um, I'd like to start off by asking you a more personal question. Uh, could you tell us what was your first, um, let's say, memory related to aviation? Um, and I would like to know whether it impacted uh, your career choices in the airport industry. It certainly did impact me. And uh, the earliest memory was when I went to pick up my grandfather who worked in uh, an aviation and um, aircraft manufacturing factory in, in Biarritz, France, on the airport. And hours before he left, we, I was taken to, to see the airplanes go, uh, go forth, come, come and go on the airport. And that's when the passion began. So as soon as I had uh, the opportunity later to join Group ADP and join the aviation industry, I jumped in. Excellent. Well, Paris Orly is one of the most innovative airports out there. Um, you're doing everything to do with um, operational improvements, uh, but also efficiency, environment. There is a lot on that list. Um, I wanted to find out more about what is the key driver behind this phenomenon and also how did it become embedded truly in the airport culture? It's an obligation. We are one of the most urban airports in Europe one of the, the most constrained, one with the most, uh, the strongest and the most numerous neighborhood. So we just need to be exemplary. And it goes beyond innovation, beyond operations. It has to do with everything we can do to be engaged with the community and engaged with the territories ar around us. You mentioned that Paris Orly is uh, really constrained on the side of capacity. Um, how can technology truly be, um, you know, a, a boon when it comes to unlocking capacity? One of the recent innovations we've had on the airport is installation uh, two or three years ago of the APOC, the Airport, uh, airport Operation Center, in which we have centralized uh, our, the control of our operations. And in this way, we have come from an airport that enables operations to an airport that controls operations, to have, who has control of our operation and who is able, whenever something unforeseen happens, which is just about every hour, to master the consequences with a place where all the information flows in and decisions can, uh, can come out. This has been a result of the CESAR research and development and deployment uh, operations because here we have implemented a number of the technologies developed uh, within this framework. Hmm. Zooming in a little bit on uh, CESAR, you're an active member of um, CESAR Free JU. Um, for those who are not that familiar, familiar it's, um, it stands for the EU's Single European Sky ATM Research Programme. Um, so I wanted to ask you, how is CESAR helping you reach your oper operational and environmental goals? I will mention two examples because it's um, a huge number of manners, so I will just uh, stick with two of them. Uh, one or two years ago, we ran a test with Eurocontrol within the framework of uh, a CESAR project of, um, uh, of commonized uh, operations and artificial intelligence as a support to the turnaround operation on the, on the airport. And also as a support to understanding how an impact, how uh, a decision on an event at 7 in the morning could have an impact uh, until uh, 8 or 10 in the evening. This test has been run for a week and has uh, taught the community a great number of teachings on, on what what came out of uh, common operations, what uh, machine learning could help. And it has been implemented in, uh, in the APOC procedures and uh, technologies now, and we are using its, uh, its result. A second example I will, uh, I will mention is um, uh, the Fastnet project that's currently starting with the CESAR GU in which we match the use of our airport resource on uh, real-time and day-to-day uh, -day fashion with 
what happens on the rest of, net, uh, of the network because we see every day interactions between decisions that are taken on the airport at 7 o'clock in the morning and uh, airplane rotations that go all over Europe and that end up at, uh, at 11.30 uh, at night and we need to master these, uh, these interfer interferences and that's an ongoing research from which we expect great promise because one of our um, main issues the, these days is how to ensure that aircraft rotation do not overse uh, overflow the curfew at night in, uh, in Orly and we have to do it of course in a preventive manner. And of course, Paris Orly is part of um, a network of airports, uh, Group ADP. Um, are there any Cesar solutions that are implemented across the network or helping the network to operate better? APOX are um, now uh, the, the, the standard on our major airports. Uh, we have another AP acronym, which is APAMS which is the, the computer solution below the APOC, the one that animates the APOC and that gathers all the relevant information for the decision makers to see, which is deployed across our Paris airports. And I will, th th these would be the two examples I would, uh, I would mention. Group ADP announced uh, plans to open an innovation hub at Paris Orly, also following the huge success um, of the existing one at Paris CDG. Could you tell us more about this project and also, I guess, what are the key benefits you are expecting to re reap from it? Certainly, we, we have the success of the innovation work in CDG. We want to build on this, but we want to build something different and something more. It will be a green lab. It will open uh, in 2025 after the, the Olympic Games. And it will be a center for, in, for innovation, but centered uh, innovation on a green solution, green technologies. And we want this to be not only for the use of airport technology, but to be also uh, at the leading edge of all that will be done in the territory around us. It's, uh, the, the idea is to serve not only our airport need the needs of our industry, but also the needs of the community. So you did um, tackle with that reply my next question, but I will still add it because maybe there are things you, you would like to also add. Um, so increasingly there is this focus um, on aviation and airports uh, to deliver on uh, sustainability goals and also having that uh, environmental responsibility that is coming to the fore. Um, and so I wonder, uh, of course you did mention already the Innovation Hub that will be a green lab, that is actually a very cool name for it, but I wonder whether there are other areas um, of innovation at Paris Orly uh, that are really aimed at reducing the environmental footprint. Very much the direction we have to take in, in aviation as a whole is uh, performance and efficiency, but and the novelty is that uh, it's performance and efficiency for the planet. And uh, much of our goals from now on will be centered on decarbonizing the industry. We, will do, we, we are doing our bit in uh, decarbonizing properly airport operations and, uh, and airport technical uh, functioning, our heating, cooling and, uh, and so on. We act as a catalyst for the rest of the operators of the industry to do so. First, we do it where it's comparatively easy on the ground by providing energy to the, the handling agents, to the, our friends, uh, the, the airlines, by allowing them to um, cool the aircraft without using the APUs. And that means providing them with, uh, with the air conditioning. In deploying, a system that do not uh, that do not exist, and so that very much part of our industrial project now it's providing a green energy and green processes to our uh, to our clients, and this can go a long way because we are already looking forward to the time when we will accompany a new means of propulsion for the aircraft, be it electricity, SAF, or hydrogen. That's actually very, very interesting. So within you know, the space at Paris Orly, do you think that you have enough, for instance, um, you know, empty space where you could accommodate, let's say, hydrogen plants or 
you know, in terms of just the sheer infrastructure, what is the impact? We'll have to, some way or another, and if it's not on our land, it will be, uh, we'll, we'll have places to receive this, uh, this energy, but we have to plan for it. It's a long term, so in, in the long term, we do have time to, to prepare even for major transformations, and we have to be ready for this. Mm. And we will, uh, we will be, re we'll be ready. It's not very different from a usual, let's say, a classical master planning exercise. Uh, it's only that the focus is different. We're not only running after capacity, we're also running about a, a, a development that balances between energy, which energy will be crucial in our, in our industry in the future, but also uh, um, environment, uh, making sure we have uh, natural spaces that remain and the needs of the uh, what I would call the classical and usual operations. Mm. So you did mention a couple of big projects that you have undertaken over the years. So the setup of uh, the APOC, um, the Innovation Hub, tests run, extensive tests run with uh, Cesar, JU and also Eurocontrol. Um, so I wonder what is your next big project? What are, what are the plans at Paris Orly, let's say, you know, within the space of the next five years? We are involved in uh, 2025 Pioneers strategy for the for group ADP, which very much revolves around offering the best quality of service, for instance through biometry. We are now engaging in the, the greening of aviation and we have an undergoing project of uh, doubling the energy intake of the airport so as to ensure that up to 2030 will be up to the challenge of uh, the energy requirements of our, uh, of our operators. And uh, we are already planning for the next steps, which will all go in the same direction of uh, operations that are more efficient, that cater for the, the requirements of an industry in an environmentally respectful way. And will technology be a key factor in this? Indeed. Technology as a, as a support to orderly operations. Uh, technology to ensure the exchange of information with, the, with all the operators. Technology to ensure that energy flows uh, uh, properly and in a harmonious way around the, the airport. The technologies developed in, uh, in the CESAR um, framework are of paramount importance for us to succeed this, uh, in this challenge. Mm -hmm. There is also a lot that is going on um, in that regard. Um, there is plenty of, um, of new solutions, new technologies. Um, you did mention also biometrics, this is a more known one. Um, but I wonder from your perspective as a person that uh, deals a lot with innovation but also with daily operations um, of the airport, um, what do you think are the technologies that we should be, you know, looking at more closely or expecting them to um, become the game changers for the aviation industry? Remote airport management or remote control management is a game changer for airport layout. Green taxing is a game changer for the, for the way we operate on the, on the ground and it needs uh, quite a lot of, of research to be operationally implemented. And I would finally mention data interchange, which is the key to all of us involved in the industry operating together in a smooth and efficient way, because uh, we have only one common enemy on, the, on an airport, it's disorder. And fighting disorder, to fight disorder, we need more and more data interchange and uh, all the power of our APOCs to, to handle and treat information device strategies. Hmm. That's, that's a really nice line, I would say. I think it, it, somehow, somewhere, um, it was also said that this is actually humanity's mission, that you know, the human mind always go from, okay, I see this order, I need to install order. So that's really a nice overarching idea for it. Um, 
And then uh, just a question is, for sure, your airport is also looking at leveraging those and um, implementing, for instance, as you said, uh, green e-taxing and uh, also remote operation. So this would be the vision for Paris already, let's say, 10 years, 20 years from now. Implementing, yes, these technologies in full or in part. For instance, remote vision is, would be a help to to manage some remote areas of the airport, it will it may, does not have to be central to the to, to the operations. On the other hand, green taxing is certainly something that we would like to happen on a massive scale in the years to come, because it's an occasion to decarbonize a significant and visible part of the of the operations of aviation. And then moving to the more immediate uh, term, and this is going to be a bit of a bonus question as well. Um, you did mention Paris Olympics, and I guess all eyes will be on uh, Groupe ADP as uh, you rev up your operations and you prepare for it. Um, I wonder whether with this lens of innovation and technology, whether there is uh, something that you are actually going to um, either pursue for the first time during the Olympics um, or just change about the operational landscape. We'll have all hands on board for this, uh, for this time, for this important time. We'll certainly deploy uh, innovative systems of passenger information and, uh, and, pas and interaction with, uh, with passengers. <coughs> we'll also deploy innovative systems of uh, baggage handling for the very special baggage that uh, sport people carry with them, which are the instrument of work and we'll take care that these are well handled. Are you more of a tech optimist or a tech pessimist? And as a follow-up question, do you think that artificial intelligence is also coming down uh, the line to shake up or let's say revolt a little bit the world of APOCs and our innovation schemes? I think I will answer both questions with one concept. I, I'm tech neutral. I've, uh, I've had great successes with technology, I've had great disappointments. So I, what I believe in and strongly believe in is the human, the human component and the human intelligence. And f as for artificial intelligence, I, it can be of help, but as a support to human judgment. Philippe Laborie. Thank you very much.